Greetings, YouTube. Happy Tuesday. Remember, it is the first of the month, so we should have those daily slash monthly cards to review and grade today when the uh, cards hit the end game inbox at noon Central Standard Time. But we also have our first look at Professor X. And I have to be honest, I get that it's probably a good idea to be politically correct and not put Professor X in a wheelchair. But I just imagine Professor X as somebody who mostly has always been in this badass electric wheelchair that has incredible powers regardless of the lack of mobility. So to see Professor X as like a floating champion, similar to Magneto or Rogue, and to see him so skinny that it makes vegan Thor look like he's uh, been loading up on carbs, I just, uh, I'm a bit thrown off, you know? He looks like Professor Teenager. He looks like a, a high schooler. Like if uh, somehow, um, basically, it's basically if you took like a very young Spider-Man actor and then said he was a professor. Okay, Professor X believed in peaceful coexistence of mutants and humans, but this all changed when um, blah, blah, blah revealed to him the inevitable demise of humankind. Uh, Professor X's mechanics. Professor X channels his psychic power to mind control his opponents locking them from using special attacks and gaining power. So he does seem to be somebody who, if he reaches his potential and will never know until he's released and tried out, especially in those master tiers of Alliance War, he could be a really annoying defender. But I did say the same thing about Ebony Coleslaw. And while Ebony Coleslaw is an annoying defender, I think he's not as annoying as seemingly first believed on paper. So I've made enough inaccurate predictions in my day of just looking at a champion on paper and either getting way too hyped about them or giving them too much credit, whether it be on offense or defense, that now until you really see the champion, there's just no way to know. Okay, base stats and health. This is kind of cool. They now have a, um, a, a chart, like an Excel chart, to show the three-star, the four-star, the five-star, and the six-star. That is a great quality of life improvement, as Kabam likes to say. Um, 26,000 five-star health, 34,000 six-star. And then you've got attack all the way up to 3,400. Okay. He is a mutant, obviously. Mind control, falter, prowess, vigilance, strengths, prevents miss and evade. Once Professor X has gained enough channeling charges, he can bypass miss and evade effects very reliably. Well, that is nice. Controller, with the combined use of his falter, unblockable, and mind control abilities, opponents will be playing on Professor X's terms in each fight. Which, again, I read that and think, that is not going to be fun to fight in Alliance War. Some things put the FU in fun. That's going to be one of them. Mutant Super Support. Make the most of Professor X by pairing him with other mutants and X-Men. As Professor X wins fights, he gains cerebral charges, which boost his synergy effects, benefiting his team. So that is pretty cool. And uh, definitely an evolution of some of the mechanics. Weakness is, okay, so he's a glass cannon champion. Very small health pull. That's because he's a kid. He looks like he's like got the body of a 12-year-old. Of course he can't take a hit. Which makes chip damage and especially damage over time effects very potent against him. His weakness is tech champions. Professor X loses his counter to miss and evade effects against tech champions. And he cannot use as many special attacks during mind control against them. Well... Here's looking at you, Hulk Buster. I don't know why I chose Hulk Buster. I just, I just felt like I could. Power control. If Professor X can't use special attacks, he can't deal very much damage. Well, well, then if you're talking about somebody like OG Vision, who is a tech champion and a power control beast, that seems like a fantastic counter already to Professor X. Power drain and burn effects also remove a large portion of his channeling charges, a severe setback. And then we've got, uh, okay, Mutation. Professor X's first medium attack is the only basic attack that makes contact with its opponent. All of Professor X's attacks deal energy damage. Immune to reversed controls due to his mastery over telep telep telepathy. <laughs> Otherwise, it's telepathy, right? I, I'm already struggling. It's going to be a long day. Well, nice to be immune to reversed controls. Take that, Emma Frost. That does, that does make sense, though. When Professor X would be struck by a basic attack, Falter, he inflicts a Falter passive, causing 100%... The opponent's attacks to miss for two seconds. This ability has a 20-second cooldown, but starts on a 10-second cooldown. When the opponent lands a special attack, Falter is removed. Avoiding an attack while dodging backwards during Falter's cooldown reduces the duration by one second. Developers note this ability allows Professor X to safely channel without being attacked. It's up to the player to maximize Professor X's Falter ability. The more attacks he dodges, the more he can use it. 
And then he's got those persistent charges, max four. Start each quest with one cerebral charge. Gain one cerebral charges when Professor X wins a fight. Cerebral charges increase the potency of Professor X's synergies. So really, I feel like this is as much a synergy champion to get hyped of as anything else. So uh, Professor, one of X's greatest features is his toolbox of useful synergies. Unlike most, Professor X can increase the potency of his synergies by winning fights. Okay. Let's scroll down because we have this, but I just want to see the synergies for the sake of this video. Because look at this. I'm like, well, 50 plus channeling charges using the fourth light attack inflicts mind control on the opponent. I feel like when I read this, and maybe it's just me, and I know it's ironic to hear a college professor say this, but sometimes when a new champion comes out, I feel like I open like a calculus textbook. And I'm somebody who likes to be ignorant <laughs> when it comes to champions. I like to just pull them out of the box and not need to study a user manual to play them well. And that's on me. A lot of people are the opposite. They really nerd out on that stuff, and I respect that. But I'm just not one of those people. So when I read this you know, 25-page manual, I think, ah, hard pass. I'll stick to Omega Red. I mean, man, I really do feel, I feel dumber every time I read one of these. I'm just like, I don't understand what half this stuff means. I'm just going to have to wait until the champion comes out and actually do it in real time. Uh, mind control is cool, though. We don't have a lot of mind control champions. Okay. Developers know Professor X is the first champion in the game that's able to lock its opponent out of their special attacks. Mind control is Professor X's big moment to use as many special attacks as he can while the opponent is almost completely subdued. And that is cool. And I'm looking forward to seeing that. Not in Cavalier Uncollected Difficulty, as I will be on the receiving end of that. But let's go down to Synergies. Oh, by the way, Signature Ability while below 75 channeling charges gain one charge per second while defending this rate is doubled. Yikes. And charges are gained for the entire fight. Again, on paper, that sounds problematic, but if you've got somebody like, I guess, OG Vision, maybe not. Okay, with the signature ability unlocked, Professor X is encouraged to inflict mind control when his opponent has as much power as possible, increasing the potency of all prowess buffs gained during mind control. Okay, synergy bonuses. Birthright with Professor X. All mutants and X-Men except Professor X, plus 25% special attack damage for each Cerebro charge, max 100%. So you can get a plus 100% special attack damage. So think about that in terms of some of the most OP mutants like Emma Frost. Katie Candy's Bay is already Emma Frost. You add Professor X, she's going to be so excited in incursions. She's going to be doing six figures worth of damage. Uh, all Professor X's synergies provide a bonus to mutants and X-Men on his team, excluding himself. Each of these effects scales with his cerebral charges. Drug Eye. All mutants and X-Men except Professor X, 18 plus 18% poison resistance for each cerebral charge. Wolverine and Wolverine X-23 plus 15% critical rating. That's awesome, especially for X-23. Colossus. Start each fight with one indefinite armor up buff, granting 15% armor reigning. Uh, unique synergy does not stack. Habitat with Storm, Storm Pyramid X, Emma Frost. Okay, speaking of Emma Frost, double, dual synergy. Uh, plus 15% prowess effect duration. Emma, gain up to 30% increased critical rating, scaling with Emma Frost power meter. Katie, Candy, you're going to freak out over the synergy. I'm freaking out for you. This may actually cause me to uh, take my six-star Emma Frost to rank two. I feel like that's actually my takeaway from this video. Maybe that should be the title of this video. Drug L with Cyclops, uh, all mutants. Hey, look, it's Kabam Mike's lover's <laughs> synergy. Once per fight, when a champion would be knocked out, immediately regenerate 7.5% of their max health. Wow, for each cerebral charge. Max 30% health? You can regenerate up to 30% health? That's crazy. That's, God. I, I, I guess the best headline would be, Professor X's synergies look amazing. Because they do. And so many mutants are already so good that I can't wait to see this. It reminds me of really a huge boost when you added Nick Fury for the first time to your synergy team. Um, Phoenix gains an indefinite pa Fury passive, increasing her attack rating by 60%. So Phoenix gets a buff. And then Cyclops, beam hits gain, plus 100% critical damage rating and inflict an armor break. That is awesome. Gateway with Nightcrawler, Archangel Beast. Oh man. As if we needed an Ar Archangel to get even better. Archangel plus 30% bleed potency? Are you kidding me? Yes! That 565, hello. Drug M, all mutants and X-Men except Professor X gain a mental barrier with 2.5% current health. I mean, this is just unbelievable. Iceman, when ice armor shatters, all frostbite effects expire instantly. 
That could be interesting to play around with. Here's looking at you, Dork Lessons, the man who inspired me to take my Iceman to rank 5. Then Magneto Guidance's bonus attacks rating is increased by a flat plus 5% or plus 15% on the final node of a quest. That's cool. Magneto Classic plus 15% attack rating while fighting Metal Champions. Also cool. Recommended Masteries, Dexterity. That should always be at least one point. Stupefy also should be used. Block Proficiency. I am so pumped about these synergies. Wow. I mean, so many mutants like Archangel and Emma Frost are already so good that they're just going to be even better. And that's going to be why I'm excited to get Professor X. It's for the synergies more than anything. He can suck on attack as he looks like that 12-year-old child I talked about. But I'm not going to care that much if his synergies are that amazing because I've got so many 565 five-star mutant champions that are X-Men or mutants and or mutants. Okay, well... Let's take a look finally at this 12-year-old kid. This is such a lot of information. And I know I went through it fast, but this video is already running longer than usual, and I don't want it to be 20 minutes. So, wow. Well, YouTube, um, are you pumped? I think Apocalypse looks cooler in terms of the OP champion, but Professor X's synergies, they're just incredible. I'm excited to put this on YouTube, and I'm excited to hear your feedback. Have a great rest of your Tuesday, YouTube. Happy September.